Morning, people, and welcome back for another episode of Disco Elysium. My my voice is trashed. I don't know. I didn't sleep well last night. I feel like I have a freaking hairball inside my throat. It's gross. I hope it won't be trouble while we're reading text. So I'm back here at uh, Joyce in order to learn more about the pale. Ask my last questions. In order to Joyce info on the lynching. No, we have to do something before this one. What was it? Which where is the quest? Is it on the first day? No, it's not on the first day. Did we complete No, there we go. Talk to Joyce about the pale without Kim. Now, I don't know what the deal with this is, as Every time we even remotely mention the pale, Kim is freaking out. He is losing his shit. For some godforsaken reason, he doesn't want us to hear about it. He seems bored, he gets impatient, he wants us to leave. I I don't know. I might have to take that uh, that check, which is pretty high. I think we can ask him to step away for a little bit. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Yeah, let's um, keep that for later. Kim told me not to mention anything to her about the job she, she asked us to do. I've got some more questions about reality. More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Yeah, it's a 72%. Kim trusts you. Ask for Kim to step away while you discuss the pale. Good idea. Just ask him. He won't make a scene. Kim? Can I talk to the ma'am alone for a second? Fine. He steps away with his nose. See? What can he do? You're a grown man. Here goes nothing. Now, what is the pale? Are you sure you're sure? Your colleague seemed adamant. Yes. What is the pale? In the worst case scenario, we're gonna take damage. I'm willing to take it. Okay. The pale is the most dominant geological feature of the world, detective. The separative tissue between the Islers. It is the inter mass. Wait, and what is an Isola? Isola is a Messinian word for a continent of matter. Enveloped on all sides by the pale. Also, isolation. Or landmass. We used to believe there was only one. In the last four centuries, we have discovered seven. Windy, Seol, Samara, Ilmara, Grad, Katla, and this, Insulinde. And uh, Insulinde is... An oceanic isola. It comprises mostly of water. Moindi is the largest, Katla the coldest, Insulinde the bluest. What can I say? Each is perishing and dear. Okay, what is the pale like? Achromatic, odorless, featureless. The pale is the enemy of matter and life. It is not like any other or anything in the world. It is the transition state of being into nothingness. Is it here? No, detective. We're safe. It begins there, 6,000 kilometers to the north, and even more to the south, east, and west. You are in the middle of the Isola. As your gaze instinctively turns north, a small black pit opens up in your stomach. 6,000 kilometers from the end of the world? Yes. That is enough. Many cities are built much closer. And... There? An uproar of matter, darling. Rising into the pale. Rolling. Evaporating, even. A great vision. The area of transition between the world and the pale is called porch collapse. Imagine a grey coronal mist, cold vapour, 
marked by spores of an opportunistic microorganism, a mold that's adapted to grow at the edge of the unrest. It's uh, the most disco thing you will ever see. What are its physical qualities? It's difficult to describe or even measure. Something whose fundamental property is the suspension of properties. Physical, epistemological, linguistic. One second. One second. Okay. <laughs> everything is working just fine. I heard a weird sound come from a computer. I'm like, okay. I broke everything. The further into pale you travel, the steeper the degree of suspension. Right down to the mathematical. Numbers stop working. No one has yet passed the number barrier. It may be impossible. If we're surrounded by pale, how do you get from Isola to Isola? Oh, it is so difficult for us. It is possible to force dimensions on the pale. In modern times, we can even compress its latitude, bouncing radio waves from one end to the other, shortening the path. But it is still hard for humans to navigate the pale without getting lost. Or having our minds damaged. The pale can damage the mind? Extensively. How? Some say the damage stems from extreme sensory deprivation. Others argue that pale somehow consists of past information. That's degrading. That it's rarefied past, not rarefied matter. They call it the blend over of the self. The pale does not only suspend the laws of physics, but also the laws of psychology. Maybe history even. The human mind becomes over-radiated by past. Was there anything mentioned earlier in the game and I didn't pay attention to it because there's so much information about this world as it doesn't use modern standards? Was there anything mentioned about the pale by Kim specifically and I didn't pay attention? Did he say anything about it? Did he have an opinion on it? Because now I'm curious and I want to ask him. What does this over-radiation feel like? It feels terrible. Absolutely terrible. International standards strictly limit civilian travelers to six days of pale exposure per year. It's more for her. Way more. You are not a civilian passenger. No, nameless detective of the citizens' militia. I am a member of the entrepreneurial business class. I'm cleared and trained for 22 days of pale transit annually. Wow. Are you over-radiated? Up to my gills, officer. What is entropenetic? Entropenetics is the scientific study of the pale, or a recent iteration of it by way of grad. The study of the pale reaches back 6,000 years. The Periconarsians called it the Western Plain. Did they cross it? The Western Plain? There are signs of pre-modern crossings. Successful navigation of the pale relies not just on technical know-how, but intensive psychological preparation. Some of these tactics have been known for thousands of years. What has entrepreneurs changed then? Nothing. We remain powerless before the pale. The only real advance in pale transit is the speed with which an aerostatic craft can pierce it. Less exposure leads to less effects later. That whole theory reminds me of that anime. Um, what was it called? Made in Abyss? Yeah. Hybrid airships, detective. Conventional rotors or jet engines no longer add velocity after the point of reference for motion is suspended, once you've crossed from near pale to far pale. In essence, we throw them in and they come out the other end. If we throw them precisely. If we do not? Then they don't. Gone like a skipping stone beneath the surface. How much pale is there compared to the world? The pale outweighs reality two to one. There is more pale than there is matter. 
and the ratio is slipping. Slipping how? To our detriment, or...? What do you think, Detective? It's growing. There is more and more of the Pale. Precisely. One of the few measurable effects of the Pale is that it is expanding at an unknown rate. An intuitive conclusion of that development is that one day the Pale will cover everything. But this sort of talk is mostly left to extremists. Stay silent. Most people, and indeed most private and government sector organizations, entire civilizations and religions even, find handy ways to ignore or downplay that knowledge. I suggest you do the same. Man, that is terrifying. I, I thought the pale was some sort of idea? Or, you know, just a, a rumor or something? But this is terrifying to think about. Let's return to reality, please. Yes, sweet reality. But before we do, tell me, Detective, is this the first time you're hearing this? Do you really not remember anything? Have I been touched by the pale? <laughs> I mean, one thing is I've been drinking a lot and taking drugs a lot and I had an apocalyptic hangover. And I still do, apparently. But... I do appear to have all the symptoms. I'm getting a sense of who I am, but no, I didn't know this. Beyond curious. Tell me, what do you think of the pale? It's Disco! Powerful anti-communist force, perhaps too powerful. Uh, wow, there's a lot of text down here. It's hiding. <laughs> its advance can only be stopped with immediate, total, ruthless communism. My god. It will end all life. Mm hmm Crow's feet radiate from them. She observes you, your bloodshot eyes and swollen face. You really didn't know. This does not spell good for the investigation, detective. If you don't know even this, then... She stops mid-sentence. It'll be a fucking disaster, I know it. All those people will die. This investigation will be my masterpiece. The one they remember me by, I promise. I hope so. I truly do. If I may suggest, hold on to your colleague, Kitsuragi. I ran a check on him and he is very competent. In the meanwhile... Yes, Kim is the best. Some of that assurance is meant for herself, as much as it's meant for you. She must have a lot on the line here. You have me. I will assist you in any way I can, even if we have to do it one basic term at a time. She gives you a slight bow. Good. You have not passed out from it. Perhaps I worried for nothing. Are we still on the reality lowdown, or should we do actual police work now? You were eavesdropping? Oh, Kim, why? He knows. He knows. I was fucking insane, Kim. You needn't have worried. But I did. Anyway. He's so sweet. I can't. I can't. Kim is the best. He looks around, a little uncomfortable now. Damn it. You're a grown man, the lieutenant thinks. Shouldn't have gotten protective hair. It doesn't matter. I like it, okay? Do we still have questions for her? Some more reality lowdown before we go. I think I we completed this. Oblige. What times are these? Didn't we ask her this? These are unimportant times, detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. Too late for what? For the big time. 
Her eyes light up. There's a flash of teeth. What's the big time? The revolution. Ah, and what is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real kerfuffle. Who got shot in the head? Those would be the communists. Generally speaking, 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists, they all got shot in the head. Wow. Oh, and the anarchists too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. But did the communists and the anarchists shoot back? Did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. <laughs> Sounds like they should have shot more people in the head. Oh my god. That's a tragedy. Yes. The Red Deluge. The Insulindian Deluge, they call it. I had a deluge too, in my head. Point to your little head. Yes. An acute thymine deficiency can be exacerbated by alcoholism. Exacerbated means made worse. Anyone else gets shot in the head on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head. Or thrown beneath a horse. Or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king. Just the king's nephew. The real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. I don't care about kings. Tell me one more thing. About head shooting. Who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral rights. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. Okay, and by liberals you mean... Liberals are usually middle class people, detective. Or the remaining gentry. The beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. Some were rich enough to stay with the constitution, with monarchy. Big mistake. Others bet on the revolution. They were called the ultras, or ultra-liberals. They fared well. How did the liberals win it all? They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? We. She's one of them. Of course. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty clear. She basically told me. If everyone got shot, who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention. The coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Wait, you just said the Liberals already took everything. The Liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The Coalition took the ground. The ocean, the laws, and the people. Who are the Coalition? The Coalition of Nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranje, and Sur la Clay. The armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. There is bitterness in her voice, tempered with understanding. She is critical, but ultimately understands the cause. Moralist? The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights, and not shooting people in the head. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now, the coalition government. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. Guilty as charged. The color of moralism is blue. The official motto of Moral Intern, or Moralist International, is a blue forget-me-not, a piece of gray sky. Unofficial. For a moment, there was hope. Not just technically, practically, for a moment, there was hope. A devout man of the center. Hard to come by. It's good to have someone who takes a moderate approach to head shooting. In your line of work, I mean. 
When was this kerfuffle? The turn of the century revolution. <laughs> Don't answer it. It's a trick question. The revolution began in 02, on the Isola of Grad, though by the end, nearly the whole world had gotten involved. How do you remember all these things? Who started it? It wasn't a who, but a what. A pandemic of Zarat, a particularly virulent prion disease, which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Mazov came along and overthrew the government. What did the Zarat do? It made people overthrow their governments. Wow, really? Of course not. It was a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. The actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. Where did it spread from there? From Revachol and Grad? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08 and the coalition crushed the Revachol commune two years later. It was the end. What came next? Why, you and I, officer. Our lives in the zone of control. Something tells you her life and yours are not that similar. Maybe it's because she has a boat and you have that necktie? <laughs> a pair of pants? Our lives are very different from each other. No doubt. But we share the same time and position on the planet's crust. That counts for more than you think. What is the zone of control? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the Coalition of Nations. And you, of course, the citizens' militia. Speaking of which, now that I am starting to understand the history behind the game, and uh, how the, the politics work and all that stuff, talking to her makes it a lot more intriguing. What she has to say is very, very interesting. The clatter of typewriter keys fills the main hall of the reappropriated silk mill. Precinct 41. Chad Tilbrook presses enter. Outside, Officer Elfboy Williams slams the door of an armored motor carriage. The Zone of Control is the third incarnation of Revachol, after the failure of the Suzerain and the Commune. What happened in the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of the inter communication. Telematic milieus, radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, in Revachol West, the aftermath continues for the fifth decade. 51 minus 8 equals... 43. Wait, you're saying it's been like this for 43 years? Time flies. What have we been doing all that time? The 20s saw a decade of urban war, west of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. And after that? The 30s. Things settled down in the 30s. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. Were they? No. It was a market mirage fueled by cocaine and quantitative easing. The 40s dispelled it like a cold splash, an Isla-wide hangover, you might say. And here we are. Welcome to reality, baby. That's it? Task updated. Get a reality lowdown. Is there still more? It doesn't say complete, it said updated. For her to be where she is, Wild Pines Group must have picked the right side. Interesting. Which side was Wild Pines Group on? They picked the winning side. That's why they're here, and others are not. They chose wisely. Perhaps it wouldn't have turned out that way had I been in charge. I might have bet on the king and let the pines to doom. You would have sided with the king? I would have sided with the cannons. If you'd seen the calibers of the things, you might have too. 
Perhaps it's better I was born when I was. Ten of the fourteen Indo tribes got it wrong. Feld, Kupri, Tricentennial. So I suppose I would have been in good company. She narrows her eyes, turning her gaze to the future out of professional habit. All she can see are vague outlines of a great winding down. The doldrums. People killed, but no great transitions of wealth. It makes her feel old. And something else. Something you can't put your finger on. What would you have done differently? Good question. What would you have done differently? Zarat would have killed more, Jesus. I would have positioned myself very precisely. I would have made it out with the mineral rights. And again, I don't know if I say any of these things. This is an alignment question for sure. There is moralism, communism, fascism in here for sure. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, this is definitely moralism. But um, I don't know about this one. I asked you. Who are you in all of this? And I asked you past less detective of the citizens' militia, what insight has acute encephalopathy given to you? Wow. She's not backing down, boys. I don't know what I would have done differently. And you would have died, most likely. Not far from here. Maybe even right here, during the beachhead, defending the coast the day the Coalition took the city. Probably. No, almost certainly. The commune would have forced you. Such was the fate of the undecided. That's enough about the times. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. Anyway, enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Now's your chance. Ask her who she is. She won't get out this time. Seriously, I want to know what you are. Hmm. She hums. Hmm. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. Stop dodging. What are you? I am the vilest of the vile. A traitor. A devourer of nations and infants. I am an ultra. She raises the corner of her mouth, smirking. Revealing a canine. Dios mio! Draw across a liberal! <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what's an ultra? An ultra liberal. It's a type of liberal. From the revolution. It's uh, not the moderate kind. I don't understand. What's so vile about that? Haven't you heard? I am a nether creature of the Forbidden Swamp. One of those who pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. I can see you thought I'd gone extinct. No sane person identifies as an ultra-liberal anymore. Not in broad daylight. You're a centrist at heart. A real moralist. Tell me. Now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? That's bizarre because, wait a minute, can we be a communist and a centrist, a moralist at the same time? So uh, I see, yeah, the moralist means centrist in modern world uh, terms. Um, yeah, can we be both? Is that even possible? In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire. Decades of guilt and pride. Forgive her. But only because you like pearlescent teeth and those light green eyes. Electrochemistry, please. Are you here? Are you trying to? No, I forgive you, but only because you're charming. I don't care. I forgive you. I do hope so. I hope we're able to remain collegial despite it. Remember, we were partners, whether you like to admit it or not. 
There's blood on many hands, I assure you. When the dust settled, the Liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. This was all our last generation managed. I can't tell who I trust less, Everard or her. At least she has been helpful to us, to a certain extent. Everard, on the other hand, I mean, both of them want, you know, little favors done. But, I, I don't know. Uh, they are both very capable. They are very good with words. I would put them on the same boat. <laughs> no pun intended. Anyway. <clears throat> would you have done something differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery, I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition. Not here in Martinez, and not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either. If not for my own sake. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched. She loosens them. Then for my daughters, we had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. Dark orange flames reflect in her green eyes. An oil fire on the ocean. You're a smart woman. Perhaps. My intellectual vanity will be my undoing. You're no dummy yourself. Thanks, Logic. I appreciate it. So am I. A smart boy getting smarter. One basic term of reality at a time. You're a patriot. Yes. I suppose I am. But I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. Seditious talk, man. The lieutenant puts down his notes and gives her a look. You have daughters. Yes. Whatever else I am. I'm also a mother. And a wife. Now, should we return to reality? We already asked her about this, correct? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, detective. Yes, we are the Revachol citizens militia. Are we? We are. Okay, yes, we've, we've done this part. That means, permit me to conclude with this. And mm -hmm. if those authorities yes, drink yes, so yes. hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality? Well, I am here to help. I remember having a few checks in here, but I don't know where they are exactly. There's a lot of text involving this lady here. Joyce has a lot to say for sure. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? Yes, we don't want to talk about this too just yet. Not before we consult uh, my, my boy Kim. Thank you, ma'am. Alrighty then, uh, let's see here, logic is for, encyclopedia is for, uh, uh, what is this, practice the art of persuasion, enjoy rigorous intellectual dis- oh, drama, lie and detect lies, conceptualization, everything at four seems to be okay, volition is a little too uh, the low side, hold yourself together, keep your morale up, doing pretty good, we're doing a pretty good job uh, with this as a matter of fact. Authority is fine. Suggestion is fine. When did this get a five? Good lord. So I'm mostly working with uh, endurance, composure, uh, maybe perception a little bit. I don't know about this. I like the art of persuasion. Maybe uh, level of this bad boy a little. Boom. Okay, accept changes. Is there anything working here? Yeah, we have the Cordoma Madakwa, which is probably a waste of my time, but I hope it's not. No, 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 don't equip that. Inland Empire, Empathy, minus two, Authority. Bring back my bag. Let's go, Kim. It is time. What am I holding exactly? No, 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 no. It's this one. This is what I want. A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. 
Knock. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. Knock again. The door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. This is the police. Open the door. <laughs> the police? Everyone knows the police don't come round here. The hallways echoes with her cackle. But I'm not joking. No. I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. She trails off, leaving the sentence unfinished. Backyard door. There must be another entrance to the east. Kim, tell her we're real policemen. Madam, I assure you, we are real police officers. The lieutenant repeats dutifully. There is no reply. Just faint sweeping sounds inside. Kim, she's ignoring us. Let's go to the back door, wherever that may be. I already looted everything. Oh! Hey, there's stuff up there. How the hell do we get up there? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. You have a keen aesthetic sensibility and Cindy's artistic impulses are infectious. 8% though. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Am I wearing THE clothes? Drama, encyclopedia, conceptualization, boom. Suggestion, composure. Let's try this again. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. It's still pretty low, but I'm gonna give it a bash. You have no clue. It's just a wall. Oh, well. So many walls all over Martinez. Weather-worn, cracked, their paint peeling. Sadness. That little shit again. And who are you? You see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. He says in a quiet voice. Despite the cold, his shirt hangs unbuttoned on his frame. Why are you whispering? It sounds like you're already in trouble. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? He asks you, adjusting his shirt. Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Can you tell me your name? My name? My name is Martin Martinez. That is not your name. That's definitely not his real name. You're not actually called Martin Martinez, are you? No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? He scans the courtyard. It's silent like the bottom of a well. Every sound captured and reflected back. Looks like you've got a good view of the whirling backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait, is someone else investigating the lynching? Did you, Kim? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. Muscular type? And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? The lieutenant takes out his little blue notebook and writes something down. Last week? I don't know. Look. He looks around the courtyard again, 
old patio stairs and dead houseplants litter the scene. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. What kind of friend? He was my Sunday friend. <laughs> I have a Monday friend, a Tuesday friend, a Wednesday friend, but, you know, usually friends on Sundays are the best friends. What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. In the neighboring windows, you can see faint reflections of his silhouette, all from different angles. All right, uh, we'll talk later. No. We won't. He takes one last drag of his cigarette before stubbing it out on the balcony. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Oh, please, suggestion, work with me, baby. Let's go. This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains? Hey, um, listen. I am just trying to make things okay again. Can we meet again somewhere else? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. His voice is soft and deliberate. With a flick of his wrist, he sends a cigarette butt sailing over the rail. But, hold on, what's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. He's gone. The lieutenant puts away his notebook and turns to you. We should run after him. See where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. So we just give up? He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. I have a few candidates in mind. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. The lieutenant nods towards a small rock on a soggy patch of grass. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. Great, let's do that. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. Turn it over. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments, and a man can be in any of them. How are we going to find the right one? We'll just have to go in and see. Yes, but first... Ah, oh, damn it! I'm on the wrong side, aren't I? Yes, I'm on the wrong side. What I was uh, gonna look for... For one, there is this, which is a hatch uh, at the top of uh, a warehouse, apparently. This is the way to the crane. And there's also this. I don't appear to be able to interact with it, though. The one I wanted to check out was this thing right over here, but it's, in, um, it's on the other side of the yard, so uh, we will look into it when we are ready to investigate the body. Eviction notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. This box is filled with cleaning chemicals. It smells of laundry detergent. An old shoe rack 
boots, sneakers, and old slippers. Hmm. His shoes come in three different sizes. Oh, my treasure. Plus one to logic? Flip up glasses? Oh, baby. So much better. Cyclopedia. Have reaction speed. Uh, conceptualization. Let's do composure. Or oh, wait. Esprit de corps. Mm, uh, minus one shivers though. This one gives us... This doesn't have any negatives. I just realized. Yes. Let's wear this. God, this is a mess. Electrochemistry. I only have these uh, two pair of gloves, right? How about the hat? Reaction speed. Still encyclopedia. Oh, yeah. Suggestion. Physical instrument. Physical instrument. What now? Half-Light, I don't remember Half-Light being very, very good. Visual Calculus is great. At minus one drama. And this gives me plus one logic. How much logic do we have? I have five, so minus one won't make any difference, really. I think I want to try... No, wait. The new ones are logic. And minus one authority. My authority is going down the dumps. Ah. Uh, with this, my authority would be... Two. God, yeah. Maybe we have to work on our authority on it? We'll see. We'll see. That takes us out to the balcony. Let's have a look at the, uh, the apartments first. Someone has drawn a five-pointed star on the wall. A five-pointed star. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. Examine the padlock. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. You got it. Items, tools. This door has been closed with a 72%. The chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. The shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. Thank you, Kim. A flamboyant poster of a white star. Real lithography. Books of critical theory on the monstrosities of capital and such. Photos of revolutionaries posing with guns. Oh. Sarah Mirizian jacket? Yeah, but the patrol cloak is so good. That makes me look slick, though. Not gonna lie. But this has better stats overall. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. Why does this tenant have a bust of Kras Mazov in his bedroom? The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. <laughs> Father Mazov, the hero of the working class. Isn't this going to upset uh, my boy? I think yes, this is like 100% communism here. No, leave the statue be. Oh. Revolutionaries love to pose with their guns. I thought I 
picked up something from the floor right here. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. Knock again. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Who is this? Demands a female voice, wary and tense. This is the police. Open up. Do I have to open the door? You hear the clacking of heels again as the other side walks right up to the door. Your tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. But Kim, the loot! It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. True. Postcard, Boogie Street 46? Hell yeah. The scrambled up postcard depicts an open air market in Boogie Street five years ago. A vendor smiles as dead roosters line his stalls, hung by their feet from canopy. Red blood flows onto the muddy street, blurry shadows of people pass. What a nice one! The door number nine is locked. Oh my god! It was a lot of fucking money! Up number eight, their mailbox is overflowing. Oh, that's the lady we talked to uh, on the other side. There's another balcony on this side. A note reads, foreclosed by Martinez Realty Associates. The sea below looks cold and winter gray. Someone has torn down the wall. Oh! Kim! We have a passage! Who lives here? The graffito says, a firing squad for the rich. Give me a moment. An elderly woman is leaning on her broom, her knuckles white as bone. She seems to be having difficulty breathing. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> she sneezes into a dirty handkerchief. Are you all right? Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> she starts coughing, red spots appearing on her cheeks. You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. Who are you? I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. Don't you have a name? Do you live here? If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. <laughs> she spits on the floor before wiping it off with a broom. Gross. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. Ma'am, that sounds sad. She hasn't spoken to anyone for a while. Even her sentences feel rusty. I have a few questions about those apartments. Ask away, policeman. Do you know who lived in the foreclosed apartment? The hell am I supposed to know? Another nut job, I assume. Is one of the residents on a vacation and their mailbox is overflowing? People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. They probably just moved or died. Hopefully somewhere else. Who lives in apartment 10? No one lives there. 
It's been empty for months. But I talked to someone through the door. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. She pauses, eyeing the hallway. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Sure. I'll go see what I can find. Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. Who lives behind the padlock door? Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. Suddenly, the old lady's face is beaming. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Astrology? Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. You mean the star in antlers? I think that's the symbol of communism. <laughs> Are you sure you don't mean astronomy? That's what I said. Astrology. <laughs> the lieutenant shakes his head as though to say, let it go. Come on, people. Try to keep up any standards here. It's not about stars. It's... forget it. I know exactly what it is about. What can you tell me about Cindy? The artiste. Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still... She leans on her broom. She leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can say for others. That's all. Thanks. She mumbles some kind of a response. Then hacks something into her handkerchief. Oh, thanks, I'm off by. Oh, God. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. This apartment is supposed to be empty. Did you break in here? Excuse me? Of course not. There's no sweet talking your way in there be official. You have plenty of reason to enter. <laughs> Are you cooking morphine in there? Oh, come on! There's a pause before you hear the door being unlocked. Nice! <laughs> and, without, and without a check! Well, that was easy. That was smart. The lieutenant says, nodding toward the unlocked door. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate you. <laughs> Looks like a fine mattress. A blister pack of medicine peeks out of the box. You should take it. Black monstrups? Plus one to indirect modes of taxation. <laughs> I'm sorry, what now? What exactly is this? Plus one to indirect modes of taxation. Meh. Oh my goodness. They're cool. This pair and uh, Ingersoll shoes have no lacing, but a strap and a buckle. Due to their elegant and affluent design, they have been described as the most advanced dressed shoe. So advanced, in fact, that walking through slush and mud does not leave a single trace on them. Mmm, <laughs> the luxury of fine things. Just look at those black monk straps. After spending an entire day hustling, Who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tired feet? You're right. Beautiful things do make people happy. Beautiful things give you a rush. It's power. Crafting your style. Draping your flesh in silk and leather. Deciding how to present yourself to the world. Remember, when they come to take it away from you, you worked for those shoes. Whether you like it or not, wearing these shoes has made you more liberal. Ultra-liberal. Oh no! I am becoming Joyce! 
They're either a gateway drug or a booster pack to get you deeper into free market ideology. Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. I guess I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse. For hard work. What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and lelonium after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. A fucking ride till I die, bitch. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. <laughs> you could say I took some money from that manana guy too. Oh, and then there's pawning stuff off to the suspicious Roy guy. <laughs> I guess I've met some guilds, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? No, I'm actually not. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? There's a market for corrupt cops out there, but the immigrant cops have priced out it. It's because of that god guy riding my ass. The system is broken. Boo-hoo. The system is broken. The establishment is keeping me down. That's not the fuck here attitude you're used to. What is this? Why are you so poor? It's because of that god guy riding my ass. The god man has set himself up one of those self-replicating money structures. You should learn from it. Don't play the victim. Think, hustler. Think with your head. Fucking taxes, man. That's right. One hundred percent. Fucking G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Aren't taxes almost non-existent in the Gossamer State that is Revachon? Really? Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass, they got their direct and their indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax. Excise duty, extraction tax, alimony, one tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you. Here, total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money. Are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? Bleeding nipples are kind of a pain, but how will deregulation help with that? Opt in, but only a little. <laughs> Can I do that? It's all about the tax issue, hustler. No other problem in the world is as pressing as top marginal tax rates. And don't you fucking forget it. What is this? What did we get? Indirect modes of taxation. Minus two empathy. But it won't take too long. First, if you have a side bitch ideology cooking somewhere, don't sweat it. 
Fighting in direct taxation for the Gossamer State is compatible with all creeds. It's cool. It's cool like that. You're a cool anarchist now, unless you don't want to be an anarchist. Whatever. Stuff this meal ticket in your eye socket. And uh, la 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 la. And let's see if we can steal some love back from the robber barons of the customs agency and the banditos at the Insulindian Financial Oversight and Competition Committee. This one sounds like fun. And it also sounds like it's gonna make me some money down the road. Similar to what Hobo Cop does. But this is a story for another time. I will be back to this because this game is incredible. Thank you for watching, have fun, whatever you do, take care of yourselves, and do not forget, keep on gaming. I will see you all next time.